both these defenses is if you're playing quarterback against the Baltimore Ravens, it's not always going to be pretty. And it has not been for Brock Purdy here in this first half. You just have to keep with it. And, you know, hopefully you can run the football, take a little bit of pressure off of you. But there's going to be plays that just are not real clean. And then you've just got to try to protect the football. Top two scoring defenses going at it here tonight. Second down and two, and McCaffrey breaks out. Still going, and he's down inside the 10. 39 yards for Christian McCaffrey, and got good blocks from Samuel and Juszczyk on his way down to set up first and goal. Well, you got Juszczyk, and then you talk about Debo Samuel and the job that they do. They got its own scheme up front, and there's the crease, and there's Debo Samuel working all the way down the field on Brandon Stevens, and an excellent job. You watch this 49ers offense over and over and over, and you see guys like that blocking at the second and third levels. First down and goal. Here's McCaffrey. He's got it. Touchdown 49ers and McCaffrey's got his 21st of the year. Let's make sure the knees were up and they were. They Touchdown sure were. 49ers. Yeah, great effort by Christian McCaffrey who's making a claim for league MVP after the interceptions that Brock Purdy has had here in this first half. But that's a great job up front by this offensive line on the scoring replay there left guard Aaron Banks he gets up to the linebacker level and makes a key block which springs McCaffrey this to make it a one point game and it is 13 to 12 He elected to kick the extra point. I, I don't. I don't mind that decision at all. That I always felt that you you take the points when you can get them, and then get into the fourth quarter before you start trying to decide if you're going for two. But in today's world of analytics, you know a lot of that has changed. But I, I like the decision to just kick the extra point. And the guy who scored the touchdown played Santa Claus. The, the entire offense. Nobody says Merry Christmas like Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> Nobody. Here's a shot to the sideline, and Bateman with a catch at the 45. Ravens up by one with 3.16 left. And a flag is down back near the offensive line play. Let's see if it's against. Illegal Baltimore. use of hands. Hands in the face. Offense number 76. 10 yard penalty. Defeat first down. That's against John Simpson, who has replaced Ben Powers at guard. Powers left for the Broncos. Simpson won the job in camp. He's been good at guard, and that eliminates a 20-yard completion to Bateman. Yeah, this was an outstanding route by Rashad Bateman, and, you know, just gets the defender running and then comes out of that along the sideline. Unfortunately, you got the penalty on number 76, John Simpson, right there in the middle of your screen, and it all comes back. It was up into the face of Javon Hargrave, who missed last week's game with a hamstring Injury they got him back and boy are they happy he is back here is Jackson out to his left throws across the field for likely And while the 49ers say incomplete the official is saying that's a catch And we'll take a look at the end of the play and see if likely indeed made that grab Nothing to say that's incomplete there. Here's a better look. Oh, he does good a good catch. job. Sure does. He's strong at the point. 13-yard completion, and now Flowers with a block as a first down. And the Ravens have overcome that hands-to-the-face penalty. As we approach the two-minute warning, they have a first down leading by one. Ten-yard pickup by Zay Flowers, and a third down conversion for the Ravens and we've got two minutes on the All-State halftime Ryan Clark's first half reaction to this game the Ravens and the Niners and all your Christmas Day game highlights coming up at the half which would include the guy to get their 12th win here tonight 
And again, the 49ers have the head to head over Philly with a win earlier this season in the city of brotherly love. Here is Jackson. He, they're going to say he was down. Down by contact when he threw that pass, and that's going to be Javon Hargrave with a sack. Well, the 49ers, they rush five guys, and you know, a lot of times when you're rushing the quarterback, a guy like Lamar Jackson, you start leaving some, some lanes open, but you see there's just nowhere then for Lamar Jackson to go. Lenore comes off the slot. They've got four others that are in rush, and they're able to get home. And there's the sack for Hargrave. He's up to seven on the year. Second down now, Jackson. Sliding to his left. There's going to be a flag in the secondary on the coverage with Ambry Thomas. He had a hold of Zay Flowers, and they threw the flag right down in front of us. And this will be against the 49ers. Right in the pass, holding, defense number 20. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. And it was pretty clear along the sideline that Zay Flowers was held by Thomas. Yeah, you're going to see Zay Flowers. He's trying to peel out of this and go up the sideline as Lamar Jackson works his way. Easy call. I mean, he grabs the back of his jersey right there and doesn't let him go. Um, but you look at what, you know, Ambry Thomas is playing outside corner because of what happened at the slot position. And Isaiah Oliver started the year as the slot corner, and then he struggled had a tough outing in their last loss against Cincinnati. So they started playing Lenore then inside at slot, which put Ambry Thomas on the outside. First down thanks to the penalty and a spinning catch by Hill. And Justice is out of bounds with a gain of three. And although Ambry Thomas is playing the best football of his career, with San Francisco, they've got to protect him a little bit. And so when you've got a quarterback like Lamar Jackson who's able to scramble and keep plays alive, it, it's hard. It's hard on any corner, especially a young corner like Thomas. As Todd Munkin says, Lamar Jackson is a two-play quarterback for any defense to deal with. They have to defend the play that's called and then defend then the play that happens when the play breaks down and Jackson does his thing as Beckham is out of bounds with another Ravens first down and there is Todd Munkin 57 years old previous three years at Georgia back-to-back -back national championships with Kirby Smart and a guy who is uh, very happy to be in this well-run organization of the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, almost anyone you talk to who's been in the Ravens organization raves about the structure and how they how they operate as a unit. Jackson out to his right on first down. He's got the tight end Kohler. And Brock Purdy's college teammate Charlie Kohler has his third catch of the year for 18 yards. Ravens have two timeouts left. First down at the 35, flag on the play. Aguilar makes the catch. Well, you'd think that one's coming back. Personal foul, face mask. Offense number 79. 15-yard penalty, repeat first down. So against Ronnie Stanley, who made his way out of the concussion protocol after the game this past week at Jacksonville and he's dealing with that surgically repaired right ankle and that time guilty of a face mask which backs the ball up we'll see where they put it down here's the call against Stanley now you see the hands right to the face there he's working against Cleveland Furl that's where they got the call bring the ball back to midfield it's first and 25 34 seconds and two timeouts for the Ravens leading by one.
Jackson complete to Flowers. And out of bounds at the 41, a gain of 10. Well, Flowers is just so explosive that you know you're out there covering him, and you, and you guard because of his speed that he's going to run by you. And right there at the top, the way he drives at the very top of the route, that's what sells it. And that's what makes Ward think that he's going to go by him. And that creates the separation for the receiver coming out of the break. Here's Likely overthrown. And it's third down and 16. Well, they had a little something going, and, you know, that penalty on Ronnie Stanley, you know, really backed him up. And against this defense, it's, it's hard to overcome those. The Ravens at the outer edge of field goal range for Tucker. We've seen Steve Wilkes. He, he brought zero blitz on the prior third down, and he's brought a little pressure tonight at times. Right now, it looks like he's going to play it a little more conventional. You try to bite off a little bit of the yardage if you're the Ravens to make the field goal try easier on Tucker. Jackson will do just that and get the first down. Still running and down near the 11. Warner missed a tackle along the way, and that's a 31-yard carry by Lamar Jackson on third and 16. Timeout, Ravens. Well, you're going to see Chase Young. He comes off the edge, and it looks like he's going to have a chance on him as Lamar is trying to buy time right there. And then once he gets outside the pocket, you're going to see Fred Warner, as you mentioned. He comes up. No chance. No chance whatsoever. To, to make a play on Lamar Jackson in the open field. What a, what a great job. <laughs> it's just, you know, overcoming long downs and distances against this defense, hard to do, but not many teams have Lamar Jackson. He is one of one, and that's a season-long 31-yard carry by Lamar to take the ball to just outside the 10 with 10 seconds and a timeout remaining as they lead by one. Jackson taking a lot of time end zone shot incomplete with four seconds left and the field goal unit comes on for the Ravens. Yeah, you start wondering about the clock. You, know, you got to be careful. You know, maybe if he gets it out, maybe you get one more shot. But with four seconds left, yeah, Harbaugh has to settle for the three points. But a great job offensively of overcoming the, the third down there and being able to at least attempt this field goal. 28-yard try. Tucker is hit from 28-41. This is a four-point game at the half. 49ers get the ball to start. And how would you describe this game so far? Well, first of all, Merry Christmas. It's been that kind of a game. It's been a glorious game. It's been a blessing. Our guys are fighting. Their guys are fighting. Two great football teams. It's been fun to be a part of. You forced Brock Purdy into three picks, but Christian McCaffrey got loose. What do you have to do differently or better to slow well, we got to tighten up our run defense for sure, both inside and outside. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you John Harbaugh has been at it a long time. And one of the very best coaches in the NFL. Two of the best going at it head to head in this one tonight. Kyle Shanahan, John Harbaugh, and Kyle Shanahan's offense will get the first crack at it here in the second half as they trail by four. You heard John Harbaugh say they got to tighten up the run defense. That first half, the 49ers had 231 total yards. The Ravens 176. But Brock Purdy threw three picks. And the first possession will start at the 25. We will welcome you back inside the broadcast booth. Joe Buck, Tori Aikman, 
John Perry is right over there. Merry Christmas, everybody. And so now the 49ers are back on offense, and uh, we'll see what they do here. I, I expected more ground game from the 49ers in the first half. Let's see if they go to that here in the second. Well, if you look at the last possession that they had when they were able to go down the field and score the touchdown, it was a lot of Christian McCaffrey. So I would expect that to continue here on, on this possession. But, you know, there are a lot of offensive people, and I think Kyle Shanahan is one of those as well, that you come out, you throw the football, try to establish a lead. You rely on the run game as the game moves along, particularly when you move into the second half. But they've had success on the ground. Here they go with a toss to McCaffrey, and it is handled by the Ravens. McCaffrey, who had six race, and, well, right now, McCaffrey for the 49ers has showed up. Well, he was trying to put the better second half together. Yeah, he averaged over eight yards a carry in the first half, but he had that 40-yard run. Even if you take that out, it was five yards a carry. So he's he's had some running lanes. Here's Kittle. Third down coming up, brought down by Queen. Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, the middle linebackers, the two inside guys for the Ravens. Very good. A gain of four right there to bring up third down. Yeah, I think both of these defenses have linebackers that are as good as anybody anybody in football. And as you mentioned, for Baltimore with Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, and then of course Fred Warner and DeAndre on the or excuse me, uh, Dre Greenlaw on the other side, it's it's a really good group and they can fly and they love contact. Third down and five. Blitz off the edge from Queen, and this one nearly picked. Wow. Sneed kind of lost his footing. Darby got hit right in the helmet, I believe, with this pass from Purdy, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Patrick Queen, he comes off the edge, and Christian McCaffrey is going to get a little bit of a piece of him to, before he goes out, and if he had worked McCaffrey, he's got a chance, but he works the inside of the field, which is fine. But this was a this was a fortunate one. And this will cost the 49ers. Offense number 36. Five yard penalty, still four down. So it back San Francisco up five yards. That is Jeremy McNichols. A running back who was activated out as one of the gunners and that little sway wow. got him a five yard penalty. Good punt by Wisnowski, his first of the night. Tylen Wallace zigzagging his way with a good return for the Ravens. And Wisnowski at the end of that play delivered a hit on the boundary and may have picked up the flag. Yeah, right over there on that Raven sideline, they were hollering for the penalty and they got it. It appears they're going to tack 15 yards on to the end of this one. The end of a 25-yard return. Personal foul. Kicking team. Late hit out of bounds. 15-yard penalty. First down. They don't Time say out. 18, but it was against Mitt. That punt by Wisnowski because of the return and his penalty on the hit out of bounds netted just 19 yards of field position. And the Ravens take over at the 44 of San Francisco, up four. Jackson. He's got Edwards, and Gus Edwards off to the races. Warner is there and able to bring him down inside the five. They can come at you from so many different directions, and this is a catch and run of 41 yards for Gus Edwards. Well, watch Gus Edwards, 35 after the play fake. He's kind of helping out in protection, and then as Jackson leaves the pocket, he just gives him a place to go with the football, and this team is really good at that, knowing that Jackson scrambles so much. Here is Edwards, and Bosa makes the play. Ravens hurried it up, got right back to the line of scrimmage, and Nick Bosa got through, no gain on that run by Edwards. Well, you look at this right now, Joe, Baltimore has been in the red zone three times prior to this possession. They've got one touchdown. And so this becomes really, really important for them offensively. Can they punch it in? Because for an offense that turned the ball over three times, 
in San Francisco to only be down four points. The big reason why is their inability to cash in with touchdowns. On second and goal. Jackson buys time to the end zone for a touchdown, Aguilar. Aguilar with the catch. Jason Verrett, who was just activated off IR after two injury-filled years, was defending. And with Jackson extending the play, Aguilar found his way into an opening for the touchdown catch. Yeah, once Lamar gets outside the pocket, Aguilar sees that he's in trouble. He starts up the field, and he turns and comes right back down the sideline. Just like we saw from Edwards on the other play, every guy really looks for an opportunity to help out their quarterback, and they do it well.